Welcome to Greg's Maker Corner. I hope you're enjoying the Wolzbot Taz 289 sidekick videos. And in this video, I'm just going to show the printing process. Towards the end of the video, I'd also like to show you how to do a tool swap, which I think is one of the neatest things about this printer. And uh, you'll see how that works and kind of what I had to do to get it working. And uh, in, in some future videos, I will talk a little bit more about just some of my observations and uh, what I think about the printer. But for now, let's just take a look at how it prints. I've just got a print started here. And right now it's just basically probing the points. One thing that I do recommend is putting this up high. I had a little too low and I was it crashed on the Bowden tube. So um, not a huge deal, but something you're gonna wanna check. And I think there might be a better way maybe to secure this just to make sure that it doesn't get caught on the X. So we're going through a probing procedure right now, and we'll kind of just keep an eye on it and see how it goes. You can see it's very quiet overall. One thing that I did notice is the the fan in the box is pretty loud. Um, it's really moving some air. I'm guessing that's probably an overspec fan, uh, but you know, better safe than sorry. It's certainly not annoyingly loud, but I think that is probably something that you know you could probably put a, a little bit <clears throat> quieter fan that moves a little less air in there. Okay, now the probing has finished. Um, it was a nine point probe. Now the bed is gonna heat up. It's going pretty quickly. Once that bed gets done heating, I'll record the first print and the first layer. All right, so we're a little more than three minutes into the uh, start of the print and now the first layer I believe is going. I just printed whatever was on the, the uh, card. So yeah, it looks like it's printing out something there, which is a good sign. You can start to see a little bit of a shape forming here. It looks like it's got a pretty good first layer. So the first layer was a little too low, so I went in here and I tuned it, and I went into the probe Z offset, and then I just changed it. It was 1.8, I changed it to 1.6, and that seems to be a little better. So you can see the screen is very much Marlin with some, maybe some a few little changes. All right, so here is the result of the first print. Um, I think it looks really good. All right, I figured some pictures would be a little easier to show here. So you can see the front, the side. Um, again, no real artifacts or any issues here. And this is the back. And then followed by the other side. So you can see really a, an overall clean print. Here you can see I've got the printer going a little bit faster and this is around 70 millimeters per second or so and I've sliced the MOIs uh, and I like to use those for benchmarking um, with other printers. Here's a close-up of two different MOI prints. The one on the left is the one that came off the Taz 289 Sidekick. The print on the right was done on a Core XY and this is cheating a little bit because the one on the right is also a silk PLA filament so you don't see the layer lines as much. But nonetheless, you get a good idea of the quality, and it's it's really good. As you can see here, this is the Bontech uh, Mosquito combination hot end, and uh, I'll put the exact model number from uh, Wolzbot in the description. But basically, um, you know, I got this because I wanted to run 1.75 millimeter filament, and I also have always wanted to try Mosquito, so I'm uh, very excited. I think this is well built. You know, it looks nice and sturdy, so. Um, we'll see how it goes on. Here's a tool head. The first thing I'm going to do is preheat to PLA and then I'm going to remove the filament on the current tool head. There's a handy option for change filament. You can just do unload filament. It's going to raise the gantry and then it's going to retract it. You can kind of see the gear moving there a little bit. And now the filament is coming out. What's up? I'm just going to remove the Bowden tube from here. Um, just by loosening this. So I'm going to just uh, squeeze this to remove. That should slide right off. This is a clip that I actually ended up sketching up and designing. I based it off the design of the 3.8 millimeter one. But basically the tube sticks in and then you can feed filament through it and it clips on uh, just like the other one did. Before I unscrew the tool head, I'm going to Go ahead and let the hot end cool down a little bit. As everything is electrically connected on the hot end, um, I'm going to power the printer off to do the tool head change. And then once I do that, I'm also going to 
after I switch the tool head, you can see there's a tool head menu in here. And you're gonna to wanna to click that and you're, you're going to wanna to pick the tool head that, um, that you have. To be safe, I'm going to raise my Z offset just so I don't have to worry about hitting the nozzle hitting the bed. Okay, I've now got the printer turned off and I'm going to go ahead and simply unscrew the tool head. There's a, I'm gonna do the one in the back first, which has, actually, I'm gonna do that one last. So there are the two, the two screws on the top, which may be a little hard to see from the angle here. I'll show you these here in a second. So they'll just come right off. And then now I'm going to reach in the back, get the <clears throat> thumb screw in the back, and make sure you put a little, you know, you hold, hold the uh, hot end while you're doing this, because otherwise it's gonna fall right off. So now I want to disconnect um, the cable here. That's basically, you know, holding everything together. And that's gonna be done right here at the top. So I went ahead and lowered the gantry so I can easily disconnect this, or I should say more easily. So to disconnect it, <clears throat> you're just gonna pull back on this tab a little bit. And then there we go. So now we've got this off and now we can put the other one on. Okay, so now I'm just gonna repeat the process um, that I did before. I'm gonna go ahead and do the back one first. We'll start on this one here. Okay, so with this one I noticed the heat insert was a little, just kind of bound up a little bit. Maybe the machining just wasn't perfect. But um, after I ran the thumb screw in a few times, it was fine. So now I've got both of these in. Now I'm going to do the back one. Okay, here goes the print. Yeah, see, I'm way, I'm way above, which is what I thought was going to happen. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and tweak this a little bit and see if I can lower the Z to where it needs to be. All right, so <clears throat> I ended up switching the tool head, and unfortunately, I could not get the Z low enough uh, to get a good first layer. So what I did was I contacted support and uh, almost immediately I was uh, able to get a new firmware that allows me to basically um, lower the Z lower than what the end stops were, <clears throat> what the soft end stop limit was, which was negative three millimeters. I ended up um, going with negative 3.2 so I only needed a little bit more, but because of the way the uh, end stop limits are set up in Marlin, you can only go so far. So I'm trying that now. Um, I think it'll probably work, so. You can see things printing pretty well here. Uh, this is the first print that I did with the Mosquito M175 hot end, and it turned out pretty well. Um, I'm very happy with the result. I did notice that there's a little bit of temperature drift on the um, tool head, so I ended up doing a PID tune later and um, that, that kept things in line a little bit better. So it wasn't bad anyway, but uh, I would recommend doing a PID tune or PID tune after you've swapped the tool heads. And here you can see the close-up of the XYZ calibration cube. You know, again, this is just a, a first print, really not calibrated at this point, but overall I thought it looked pretty good, um, especially for a first print off of a new tool head. All right, so I'm finishing up my initial video here on printing with the Mosquito M175 tool head. In my next video, I'm going to talk a little bit more about how this, how I think this printer compares to some of the other options available in the market, as well as maybe some shortcomings or, you know, maybe some things that I think will be uh, room for improvement. So please stay tuned and keep watching.